everyone. Welcome to January 8th, 2024, Steel Tuning. Um, I'm Hoda, also known as Intrepid Bodies, and this is the weekly divination container live from the room radio way. Um, and um, Steel Tuning is a container where I basically just pull cards um, and create like divination spreads for the week ahead. Um, I like pulling cards, cards card pulling is fun. Um, I also recently made an offering where you can book one-on-one -on -one sessions um, for me to do exactly the same thing that I do on field tuning, in field tuning that is, um, for you if you need to. Um, so feel free to check all that out, hopefully in the episode um, description here. Um, so I already pre-pulled some cards in advance and was kind of chanting also a little bit earlier before I started recording this container which to me also always really helps like um, kind of like ground my presence in a container and also like kind of clear my channel so that whatever I'm, I'm sharing is like relevant, I, I can say. Um, and so what I'll do um, for those of us who are here live is I'll take photos of the cards. Oh, shucks. Oh, I thought I put them out of order already. I was like, okay, wait, they were in a particular order. Um, it's, I'm also talking really loud because it's raining really hard here, by the way. Um, so I'm going to mute for a second, take photos of the card, and then go from there. All right, thanks for waiting, y'all. I'm going to paste the cards in the order that they came in in the chat, and I'll read them out for those listening asynchronously, and then also we'll share a photo of these later on in my blog post. So first card we have is the Ace of Cups um, in the upright position. We have the Three of Discs in the upright position. We have the Eight of Swords in the reverse position. We have the death card in the upright position, and then finally the priestess of swords. I'm gonna kind of hold a little bit of space for those cards to kind of sink in, not only for y'all, but for myself as well. If you want to take a couple of deep breaths, I also welcome you because I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> I feel like I feel like somebody who plays any kind of ball game who's like about to go on the court or go on the field. This is field to me, but I feel like that person, and I'm like, okay, give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball. Like I'm ready to go in. I can also read um, the meanings of the cards before I go into them. To kind of bring um, some context for anyone who needs it. <laughs> so, 
starting with the eight. Um, the Ace of Cups symbolizes falling in love, self-love, and allowing yourself pleasure. Falling in love, self-love, and allowing yourself pleasure. Then we have the Three of Discs, which represents um, a group project, finding life work or and or spiritual work which is really beautiful. It's like these cards are very polarized. And then we get into the Eight of Swords um, in reverse, which I don't think this particular deck booklet clarifies um, off cup, but the Eight of Swords represents thinking you are boxed in, approaching something too directly. Um, the advice here being like, um, the advice here being, be like the crows of folklore, they are able to laugh at human affairs. Then you have um, the death card, which represents or speaks to death not being an ending, but a transformation. Nothing in the universe is ever destroyed. Things simply change form, like the snake shedding its skin. Fully conscious and aware of itself, a person leaving one state of being is simultaneously reborn into another. And then we have the Priestess of Swords. Um, the Priestess represents um, the combination of water and air, sending out prayers and plans and strong fight. Ashe. And Anna says, I pulled the Priestess Sword as my January card for my year ahead back in June. So that's cool. Cool weaving. Weaving, yeah, I feel like offset, um, off cuff. This, these cards kind of bring my awareness to, um, I guess starting with the ace of cups being about self love. Um, I don't know, just off the illustration of it, I just kind of see somebody who is, um, taking a leap of faith or a character in someone's life who represents what it looks like to take leaps of faith or act in faith or live in faith, which is something I talk about often in fill tuning so um i will say that a lot of these readings are like thematic for me too so the ace of cups is very par for the course here um the three of discs um this is the card that i kind of call my collaboration card and so for this card to come after um a card about self-love about um living in faith or dipping your toe in a life led with faith I feel like for me, a lot of the times, like the collaboration card can speak to like, I feel like a myriad of messages coming through in relation to this card, because I'm like, on the one hand, it can speak to like collaborating with like people in your life, like, okay, like kind of touching base and like making do with what you in a, in a, in a collaborative group may have. But then it also kind of speaks to, for some reason, I guess what I'm kind of like sensing into is that three of discs in this particular context can also point to just the possibility that your spirit team is like part of like your collaborative court of people or like kind of like the, the things or the part of life that you like collaborate with and so like there's an image of on this card of like one woman um over a wall helping another woman up a ladder um they are not trying to get over the wall they're building the wall and so that's what's really like interesting to me because i'm like i think that's why i think of it as like a collaborative card is because the illustrate um illustration is so um poignantly pointing towards working within an interconnected web of of consciousness of other people of other ideas and so um predictively i would probably say this week is a good week to engage in self-love activities um to kind of like put yourself first so to speak and then like if you're already putting yourself first like um practice imagining a life with with the behest of like your guides and your ancestors and your like vaster higher self like think of a life maybe like like of what that would look like or feel like what one's life would look like or feel like 
if they put themselves first like all the time and maybe not just like for one day but I also feel like saying that like self-care on a like one day basis or like being able to access it when you're able to is also understandable you know I don't think that there's anything about this message that's like self-care because you need to recover from something like the ace of cups and the three of discs is like take care of yourself because you're about to give birth to a life that's worth taking care of I guess I can say I guess to say in short <laughs> um but yeah I'm curious what that brings up for anyone um and before I get into the eight of swords and like the death card and the kind of tone switch in this reading It's really interesting because I feel like something else is coming through for me about the Ace of Cups. <clears throat> it feels like very specific, so I'll keep meditating on it and see if, if I can braid it into the divination um, as I go forward. yeah okay so i'll go into the eight of swords which is interesting to me because this is this this card when we read the booklet um spoke to basically like um thinking about or how did it put it like being boxed in or like thinking you are boxed in approaching something too directly be like the crows of folk folklore they are able to laugh at human affairs which is so interesting because i feel like there's something about the first two cards, that's what I was going to say, that feels like preparatory, like do a little self-love or like start imagining yourself as a person who's madly in love with themselves or like start creating boundaries so that like loving yourself um, is a little bit easier. And I feel like um, the three of discs kind of reflects that being like a like thumbs up from spirit, like, yes, keep doing that. And then like visualize and like kind of imagine yourself as somebody who like loves themselves for lack of better words and then the eight of swords is like in reverse is so like upright it's like thinking you're boxed in but then in this reverse state i feel like it's communicating something that mirrors what this three of discs is speaking to and to me the three of discs again is like how to like help yourself like a lot of the times i'll be honest like I guess maybe that might be like the way that I'm reading this card is like often when I pull cards, I'm like, don't tell me what's going to come. Tell me how I should conduct myself in any given circumstance. Like, I don't think I necessarily um, like sometimes I'll pull like outcome cards. Sometimes I'll be like, OK, show me the timeline. Sometimes, you know, like there's a time and place, obviously, for everything. I don't think anything is off limits. But I think for me, I pull cards often um in relation to how to like conduct oneself and so to come back to the three of discs i feel like that's a how to conduct yourself card and so again coming back to the eight of swords not to kind of like make us hopscotch around but i am kind of like picking up a pattern where it's like and this is how you kind of like would liberate yourself from like old mental patterns or particularly mental patterns where your self-concept is like boxed in or i want i almost wanted to say blocked but I mean, maybe that aligns too. Um, but like maybe we're like, there are things that are like kind of caging you up that aren't the most like ideas about yourself that aren't the most loving or like boundaries that don't reflect the most. Um, the like the truth about how you want to engage in like relationships, you know, um, I don't know. I'm having I'm having a little bit of trouble coming up with words, but there is ultimately I think for me, something in this eight of swords that relates to, 
I'm hearing like free your mind and your ass will follow. Like how important it is to, um, before you like try to go change your perception, I don't know why it's coming in, in like this, like before you try to change your perception about the world and other people, maybe like start with yourself. Is kind of like the message with those three cards. <laughs> but I'm going to read the chat right now. Makes me think of what Nobu said recently, an escape, quote, an escape hatch of faith that Eight of Swords reverse. Ah, interesting. Escape hatch of faith. Can you say more? I also don't think I saw, maybe I did see where that was said. Excuse me. But yeah, escape hatch of fate. Oh, I'll have to check that out later. Yeah, because I'm just like, I'm trying to like contextualize it, but I also think I may have just missed it too, message wise. But yeah, um, it's interesting because now I'm trying to see um, the cards in that context. And I feel like, yeah, like there's something about like living in faith, um, trusting yourself, all that, all that like good that like good kind of advice but i also wonder if like there's kind of um to the current cosmic context okay yeah yeah thank you for saying that all right i think i'm going to move on to the death card because i feel like within this context it's very juicy um i'm not gonna do the usual things tarot readers do where they're like death is not a bad thing blah 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 it's transformational because i honestly feel like um in this context it's like because this is like a weekly reading it's like i do kind of want to say like prepare for something to die this week <laughs> like prepare something for something to let go and i feel like if you're doing spiritual work or like you're on a spiritual path and there is like a part of you that is like cultivating your awareness there you're probably like very familiar with <laughs> the fact that things sometimes just have to change and i feel like that's what the death card is signifying um because it's like okay like it's so interesting because we have the discs we have the cups we have the swords and then we have the death card, which is a major arcana card. So it's like, it feels almost like as I progress through this reading, it's like something will be tried emotionally, something will be tried materially, something will be tried mentally, but ultimately like the death card speaks to an ending. And I just keep hearing like a pattern, which is like, I say pattern because I'm like, I mean, patterns come up every single day. <laughs> um. I'm noticing patterns doing this reading. So it's like, I guess part of me is like, yeah, like I want to kind of point to the fact that, and maybe I can pull a clarifier on this, but I also feel like the Priestess of Swords will kind of color this in a little more. Um, but I'm curious what comes up for y'all seeing the death card like in the middle of the, of the poll so far. Yeah. Mm. 
Him recontextualize for this death card. Interesting. Like coming into the present and letting the past go. Mm -hmm. Oh, like she says, I feel like the death of old foundations. To allow new ones to take root and develop comes up for me. Mm -hmm. Thanks for reflecting, guys. Yeah. It's interesting because I'm like, yeah, I just, um, it feels like, yeah, this abrupt sort of ending to some sort of pattern. And it might be pattern of like holding on to the past. It might be pattern of um old foundations um it might be a pattern of old coping mechanisms it might be a pattern of like old escape hatches maybe i don't know why that came up but i'm like old ways of like escaping circumstances or i think just like coping with reality and i feel like with all the energy that like has been put into not necessarily saying that this has to be for everyone but i'm like Dang, like so much energy went into the new year portal that I wonder how many, how many times, not even for the like new year portal, do we like cross a threshold of like personal self, spiritual, mental perspective development, and we still carry on as like our old selves. And I just kind of keep hearing like that's dead weight, you know, not to be so blunt, but I do feel like. There are ways that we can either like take on projections from the world and that can be like, oh, that projection is inaccurate. So I can hold on to that or like, you know, yeah, like past situations where I'm like I was or anyone was like illfully represented or illfully, illfully conveyed. And then it's like you can carry that on or you can have old concepts of who you are as a person. Like for me, a lot of the times it's like. I don't do that. I do that. I don't do that. I do that. I don't. And it's like, I mean, I like I can determine that. Yeah, I'm the boss. But I'm like, it's it's kind of like um, to kind of just speak plainly. I would say like degenerative to kind of continue forward in life and expect number one for me to stay the same. Number two for like circumstances that I'm used to that like keep me comfortable to keep keep going with me past a certain threshold of growth and I feel like I keep emphasizing that too like a something about these cards emphasizes that like especially with like how positive they were at the beginning and then kind of how like the tone switch with the death card and so with the priestess of swords for me it's about prayer you know like how to be the, the figure the person the dude the girl them who's the ace of cup is like you got to be ace to be ace of cup in the street. You got to be like priestess of swords in the sheets. You know, you got to like keep your prayer hands strong for yourself, for yourself. I'm like, honestly, like I feel like the most powerful prayers that I've ever done with for the world, you know, just like, especially as like somebody who's a mystic and who believes in like the power of prayer. I'm like the most powerful prayers that I do for the world start off by like praying for myself where I'm like, you know, and it's sometimes it's not legible. Like y'all know that I like saying and I chant and I, my hand is itching. Like I, I like do light language and I like, sometimes we'll just like hum, but I'm just like, dang, like sometimes it is those acts that like can kind of, I don't even want to say like turn things around and be like, oh, but it's like, those are the things that I think create um, pivotal change in, in one's life. And at least like, if not, in the external events um, in a way that can like impact your perspective to be able to have more grace or to have more love or understanding or peace and serenity with what you do see in the world. Um, so it's not like any one behavior is like being cut out, but I feel like there's a pattern that's being reworked 
so that the outcome of an a particular energetic flow can be um yeah can be given the room to like flow differently if that makes sense i'm going to read what some of y'all are saying in the chat uh, lexi said also death of self i don't know if i read this already but even if i did i'll read it again um death to, also death of self lexi says reimagining myself in new ways who i want to be now and how do i want to show up etc definitely anna said call me out hoda <laughs> reimagining love that anna says lexi says prayer has been in my field again the last few weeks interesting how so I'm also going to share the card that was at the bottom of the deck because I think it's pretty spicy. Okay, there it goes. So we have the judgment card at the bottom of the deck. Oh, uh, is that okay if I read that out loud? Let's see, Lexi says, um, praying Islamically again and in a new way. Cool, that's exciting. So, for the judgment card, it says. A sure sign of the arrival of the new age is, wait, a sure sign of the arrival of the new age is the movement of personal consciousness from ego to heart. As the heart opens, compassion is felt not only for others, but for the self, allowing old judgments to fall away what? while anger and hatred are released into the past. What? <laughs> Yep. Yep. That's so funny. Yeah, thanks for saying so, Anna. And it says, I kind of love the Priestess of Swords after death. Because death is like decomposed into the earth, but then also something about that owl being released into the air. I don't know. The contrast is dope. Yeah. Yeah, and it feels like, um, I feel like for me with the judgment card, it kind of sums up everything that was um, kind of being shared in the re reading about kind of like letting go old patterns. I'm really not sure how else to expand. So I'm like, I'm curious if anyone has like clarifying questions or cards that they want to clarify. Cause yeah, I, I mean, the reading feels pretty complete in terms of the week. I would say like ritual wise, maybe like, I mean, I'm always down for a purging ritual. I feel like every day could be a purging ritual, no cap. But I feel like there is something to be said about purging the past. Um, uh, and maybe not like how you see the past or like try to act like what happened didn't happen. But it's something in this about releasing so that the flow of energy, like honoring the flow of energy, like regardless of what it is. And then seeing if there are ways that you can, um, yeah, kind of create space to allow new sort of energetic shapes to take form. Like, I feel like a good element because it's raining right now is like water. So like maybe a cleansing bath, a cleansing shower, um, praying over water before you drink it, um, you know, and just kind of maybe like setting the intention. Like I release like 
the way that I perceived myself on these particular timelines. Um, I released the judgments that I hold um, uh, for myself or against myself for the way that I responded in X, Y, and Z. But then also don't throw those things away. I also feel like a potent second part to that ritual might be and like help, like, you know, whomever you commune with, whatever divine essence um, you relate to, like kind of saying like, what can be put in its place? You know, what can I repurpose this energy towards? What was my intention? Even though I responded like Y or like X, like how can I turn X into Y? Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's what I got so far. Any questions or like, I don't know. I was shuffling and like hella other cards came up, but I don't think I'm going to talk about them because they're not specific. He said, thank you. I like the ritual idea. Yeah. Thank you for saying. Dang, these cards are jumping. <laughs> Ooh. yeah there's something about these cards that's like about like this this week's pull that has a lot to do with like uh yeah that death card really did it for me <laughs> and i'm sure other people feel different types of ways everybody has their own relationship to the death card um but in this context it feels kind of important to name that like leave a little bit of room for something to transform itself. So yeah, if there aren't any questions or clarifiers, I'm trying to feel into it. I'm like just shuffling my cards like what else is there Yeah, I'm feeling into if I should pull an oracle card and I'm hearing no, which is strange because I'm like, usually field tuning is like, <laughs> like an hour and a half sometimes. This is like the shortest it's been in a while. Well, all right. I will let um, Craig go. Thank you, anyone who... I hope the audio came through really well. If not, that's fine. Thanks, anyone who's listening on the podcast. Um, feel free to pull up to uh, Field Tuning every Monday at 3.30 p.m. Louisiana time. And, oh, thank you, Lexi. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Peace.